Hi, welcome back to Adumbrate. Now, a few weeks ago, we produced some red fuming nitric acid, which is a form of nitric acid which has no water present in it. Now, this was a cool achievement for us since it's the first time we've actually done a proper distillation and received a product from it that we could actually use. So this week, we've decided to actually use it for something. And in this case, it's to produce butter of bismuth, bismuth chloride, which is a compound which is usually used in, as a sidestep towards getting pure bismuth or in a, a obscure organic reactions as a catalyst. So to actually take bismuth metal and convert it to bismuth chloride, such as we will be doing in this video, seems rather paradoxical. And in truth, it is. This is mostly an educational video and to also demonstrate what red nitric acid can be used for. Uh, in this case, we'll be taking use of its uh, lack of water. Since it's a liquid acid which doesn't have any water and nitrates compounds, we can produce compounds which will which will rapidly disintegrate under the presence of water. In this case, bismuth chloride will react with water to form bismuth oxychloride, which is a compound which we've already made and we don't want any more of. So, in order to take advantage of the red nitric acid, we're going to be using this reaction, and we're going to show you what that works, how bismuth chloride works as a flash powder, uh, which is a fun little reaction you can do at home. Don't do it at home. Um, thanks for watching. Grams. We got uh, 2.1 grams of bismuth, uh, 3.8 grams of nitric acid, and uh, 1.8 grams of uh, salt. Uh, we multiplied it by uh, 6 because that's how much nitric acid we need. And then uh, we're just dividing by uh, 100. Or, uh, by, uh, yeah. And then we're going to take that number and uh, we're going to convert that to grams and use that in a reaction. First we got our bismuth here. Now, uh, bismuth doesn't really come powdered, it usually comes in chunks. So what you can actually do is you can heat it up uh, on your stove, because bismuth has a really low melting point. And then you can uh, dump the molten bismuth in water, and that'll make really um, quite well powdered, very weak substances. Okay, so we got uh, a little bit over 2.1 grams of bismuth, but that's okay considering the method we use to get this bismuth in a small form. As you can see, there's still a little bit of bismuth down there reacting, and as the salt comes into solution, it forms just a little bit of that buttery um, bismuth chloride near the top here, and that, that bismuth chloride is what we want. Butter of bismuth. Once the synthesis is complete, you should notice the formation of two distinct products. Uh, higher up, you'll see the formation of bismuth oxychloride, where water is introduced into the system. But lower down, you'll see the more crumbly bismuth chloride, which is the intended product. Now, of course, the more water you add, the more bismuth oxychloride you'll have, and the less bismuth chloride you'll produce. Uh, and bismuth oxychloride isn't a useless product, but it's certainly not what I was looking for in this reaction. You can use bismuth oxychloride for a variety of other reactions, as an oxidizer for crappy flash powders. Or you can simply throw it away, or recycle it back into bismuth with uh, pyrolysis or some other process. So theoretically, this butter of bismuth bismuth chloride should act as an oxidizing agent, and you should be able to reduce it with something such as magnesium back down to bismuth metal. Now, in such small powder amounts like this, and with the technique I'm going to use, which is essentially just flashing it, there probably won't be any discernible pieces of bismuth metal formed, but you could replicate this reaction in something such as a vessel or using magnesium dissolved in perhaps uh, milk of magnesia. That might work as well. So we're going to try that out. We're also going to compare it to the uh, flash powder that you can make with bismuth oxychloride to show you what that oxygen group does to change the actual 
uh, flashing of this powder. Here's one technique I like to use for making flash powders. I get a small plastic pan sort of object I cut out of a water bottle, and then I take a pencil, I burn away the outside until there's nothing left but lead, use that as an electrode running through the middle, and then put some high amperage through it very quickly. This allows me to reach very, very high temperatures in a very localized space, which avoids the use of a blowtorch and allows me to essentially burn anything I need to, which in this case will be our butter of business. As you can see here, the pencil burns very rapidly, and once the wood is gone, it reveals the graphite core, which we can use as our electrode. Once the burning's done, we can crack away this outer layer. Mixture with some magnesium, I have taken all the bismuth chloride I produced in other reactions and put it together, and now it's ready to test. So now we've got this all put in. Let's see what happens with its power through. so well. But right after the fire you can see the yellow residue of bismuth oxide. Now for comparison, here's some bismuth oxychloride. And look now, you can see some of the bismuth oxide left on the floor. Notice the yellow coloring. Especially. some more colorful variants of bismuth oxides left over. This has been a Dumbrite. Thanks for watching. Smooth.